Hello everyone, it's good to be here again. Today, I'm going to introduce to you another way of doing literary criticism. If earlier, what you did was mostly focusing on the work, which is why I call it work-driven, now what you are doing is focusing more on the theories or the topic. And I'm going to call it the topic or theory-driven literary criticism. However, the objective is pretty much the same, which is understanding the work deeper. You will know the work more than what is explicit on the surface. I will give you an example to make it easier to understand. But before going there, let me review a little bit of the differences between uh, what you have done and what I am now going to introduce to you. Right, as usual, let's go to the screen here. This is what you did earlier. It was called, or I would call it, a work-driven literary criticism. You start with reading the work, you like it, and you have questions. And then you formulate the questions into research problems or problem statements. And then you go to the work to read it to find an answer. However, in addition, instead of stopping there, you add critical theories to your answer to make your answer uh, sharper, uh, stronger, and more substantial to uh, uncover the implicit meaning of the work, implicit potential of the work. So this is what you did. For us literary students, I actually recommend this. I cannot recommend this more, okay? It is very important for us to appreciate the work, to enjoy the work, and then do a study on it in the light of critical theories. This is our, well, this is our baseline. However, this is not the only way to do it. I believe there are so many ways of doing so many things, okay? There is not one single formula to uh, accomplish a work. And the other way or the other route to doing literary criticism is what I am now going to show you. It is the more topic-driven or uh, theory-driven literary criticism. Why is it called that? It's because you start with a topic or a critical theory, your interest in a critical theory, and then you try to formulate a question relating the critical theory and one work of literature, a novel, a poetry collection, or maybe movies, okay? You try to formulate a question about the presence of this in a literary work or uh, how the literary work is seen from this perspective. And then you go to the work, you read the work or you watch the work if it is a movie. And at the end, you will get a deeper insight of the work. So the goal pretty much is the same, okay? And uh, here again, what I wanted to emphasize is that you start with a theory that you are interested in, that you are passionate about. And then you try to see how a literary work is seen from the perspective of that theory. And then you read the work and you get a deeper insight of the work. That's what you do. And to give you an example, this is it. You might be interested in eco-criticism. Eco-criticism is uh, well, when it is an ism, it is a philosophy or a belief that uh, we need to act in a certain way that is harmonious to nature. And when you believe in eco-criticism, what you do is usually you try to promote the love of nature or uh, promote the preservation of nature and uh, you will go against anything that can harm nature. One of the theories in eco-criticism is called anthropocentrism. Anthropocentrism is the belief that human, anthro, is the center of the universe. And when you think human as the center of the universe, it becomes harmful. You will see everything else as serving to your purpose. And then eventually it will lead to the destruction of nature. So you know eco-criticism and you know also anthropocentrism and you want to see a work or um, a literary work in the light of this. You want to know, for example, how does the novel portray nature? How does one particular novel portray nature? And then 
after having this question, you start going to the novel and reading the novel to see the relation between human and nature in the work, or to see how the character portrays nature, how the character treats nature and so on. And what you get eventually is a revelation that it turns out that the novel portrays nature as something sovereign, something independent, something that is not um, dependent on human. In fact, human in the novel is just an accessory. So this is the deeper understanding of the novel that you get in the light of the theory. Now, this might look familiar to you because many people uh, seem to have done this in the past. However, I see that there might have been some problems in the way many people, many people do this kind of route or take this kind of route. The problem is usually what people do is instead of seeing the work in the light of theory, what people do is trying to find or trying to uh, affirm certain theories from the work. What they want to do is to check whether a work is in line with the theory or is not. And in my opinion, that is a limiting way of seeing a work. It's an impoverishing way of seeing a work. If you see the work in that manner, then the work is going to be just a tool to affirm the, the truth or the strength of a theory. And it's not supposed to be that way. A work, a literary work is the result of human imagination. And sometimes the work goes beyond what is present. A work can make people think about a lot of things that they have not seen. So if you use a work only to affirm a theory, it's impoverishing. It makes the work less than what it's supposed to be. So when you do the second route here, please make sure not to use the work only to affirm a theory, not to use the work only to see that one theory can be found in a work, but try to use the theory in your reading of the work so that it can unveil or it can, it can unearth the potential of the work that is not clear in the service, on the service. I guess that would be all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope uh, this can be useful for future when you do your research in literature. And with that, I would say goodbye, everyone. Thanks.